we uh, wish to have been Okay, and I would also like to acknowledge that we have chosen two positions for the discussion, artists and on one hand uh, developers and institutions who have real estate assets on the other hand. That means that there are many other different positions in the audience uh, that we would like to engage their opinion to broaden the discussion and, uh, and have a rich uh, debate today. Thank you very much. And Today's conversation uh, is really about the relationship of uh, two particular types of partners or stakeholders in a very particular urban geographic uh, location, downtown, and then the two stakeholders that we're discussing are artists and art institutions, and then uh, sort of property owners, private uh, and property owners. Uh, that doesn't mean that the processes that we are talking about don't exist in other parts of the city. It doesn't mean that there aren't uh, different kinds of private um, property owners or different kinds of artists uh, that are represented here. And it doesn't mean that there aren't stakeholders not represented on the stage who are also very important part of downtown and its development. So this is a very specific conversation. Uh, and I think um, I'm, I'm I don't want to do too much of, a, of an introduction, but I just have a few slides that I put together for you. Um, first, just to, to identify where we are and then the institutions or some of the um, spaces that we're talking about. Uh, this is, uh, should be a familiar map of downtown. And uh, just to familiarize uh, our position, there's the townhouse, the Vinwas, and uh, the Hayes Library campus. And also the students of Smarea, Cimatec, and uh, CIC. Um, downtown, uh, as we know today, is of course uh, the 19th century urban expansion of uh, Cairo, uh, a chapter in the modern Egyptian history that's often uh, treated, I think, in a very shallow and uh, misguided uh, reading of uh, sort of our Europeanization or sort of our copying. Uh, it's a very aesthetically based uh, understanding of urban development where, in fact, the historical records show that it's much more than just what buildings look like or wide avenues or so on. And it's really but basically, the folk that I put in downtown was developed over two phases, Ismailia and Tokyo hence the name of one of our speakers from Ismailia. So this is typically what people talk about when they talk about downtown, the facades, the European appearance, from the actual processes that led to what we know today about downtown. Um, but there are different ways of looking at downtown. Downtown is a neighborhood. Uh, and then this, this is a picture from the 70s where you can still see traces uh, of shops that actually closed up in the 70s and have eventually been replaced since with different kind of commercial activity. Uh, sometimes the same type of activity, just new owners, and sometimes uh, something totally different. So coffee shops for uh, a lot of sort of European style coffee shops, but the black and the and the black and the and the black and the black and the black and the so we had, for example, more shoe shops, more sort of modernization of downtown streets that reflected uh, the disappearance of a certain uh, sort of neighborhood structure of society that uh, uh, was used uh, for different kinds of activities and services. Um, and just to remind us, we're not the only ones as a society and uh, I'm just really more concerned with downtown. The government itself had some aspirations and dreams uh, not too long ago. Uh, this is a snapshot image of uh, one such vision for the future of downtown. Um, but I think it's important to start with the street level view and sort of look at downtown as an existing condition today. What's happening today on the streets? And then who are the partners 
uh, interested in sort of pursuing something in downtown for different ends. And so we have, again, two particular perspectives uh, that will speak for themselves, uh, where they fit in, and then we'll open up the discussion, final discussion, and then we'll also to, to sort of understand the relationship between artists, art spaces, and the development of the and so the, the panel uh, for you know, specific, you have the program in hand. I won't read it. I'm not a long film description, but it's, it's concerned with reiterating the issue of you know, classic appropriation of artists um, as catalysts for a big job. One of the issues that I've had as an observer of what has been happening in downtown is how people have been speaking about uh, downtown the development of Cairo is the appropriation of terms that come from very specific uh, experiences elsewhere, like the idea of gentrification that comes from uh, wholesale applied and the aim of having downtown removed from the very specific context out of which that concept emerged, and not dealing enough with the street level perspective that Cairo, the unique experience of Cairo. Uh, so that's one of the issues that I personally as uh, just a member of this conversation I can just more about. Um, so we have a on Street. Um, and was also mm -hmm. his first um, feature film, The Last Days of the City, uh, due out uh, to this one soon. Hopefully soon. Um, um, Heba Farid uh, is a multidisciplinary artist uh, based in Cairo also, who uh, also has a land, uh, background in landscape architecture, fine arts, uh, and theory. Since 2004, she has been working on uh, an independent multidisciplinary art and research project uh, about uh, Naima Masriya, a early 20th century performer uh, from the phonograph um, era of Egyptian Arab music. And she's also a founding member of the CIC, the Contemporary Image Collective. Um, and she also is part of the uh, Photographic Heritage Program, the Photographic Memory of Egypt at Kultnat, the uh, Center for Documentation of cultural and natural heritage, um, which is part of the Biblioteca Alexandriana. Um, we also have Anya Shrensky uh, from the Townhouse, a curator from Townhouse, who's been working on and off with Townhouse since 2009. Uh, she's written for several publications. Uh, she's also done work, her research uh, was on the Hadi of Hazar, um, a whose drawings in the 1960s and in the relationship with those drawings to 1960s science fiction in Egypt. Um, and then from the other perspective that's presented today, we have Bruce Ferguson, who is the Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences at the American University in Cairo. Uh, uh, Bruce will sort of present the, represent the AUC uh, perspective as a stakeholder in downtown. We so of course have the AUC Greek, Greek campus, uh, which is still uh, owned by the out to to and then Kareem Shafi, who is also in the textile industry, the 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 Kareem's perspective is that private uh, capital would be a better with what we have So, so the one to the more, I'd like to you. highlight the absence yeah. of the third party that should definitely be in the book, which is a municipal uh, 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 public uh, entity. Uh, 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 so perhaps uh, at the end of our conversation we can lead to my feeling uh, uh, that an independent body would uh, be uh, 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 I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do
2004 started to use um, this old paper factory, which is a 650 square meter property. So I think the biggest exhibition, at least independent exhibition space in the city. Um, and shortly thereafter, we also took over an abandoned garage, uh, which is close by, which became the Royal Bank Theater. Um, And as we've, as Townhouse has expanded and our programs have sort of infinitely multiplied, and we've <coughs> grown to occupy more and more space, it's been a very reciprocal exchange with the kinds of uh, industries, both formal and informal, that surround us. Um, everyone knows the coffee shop, of course, in front of Townhouse, as well as the smaller one, the nearest coffee shop, which is closer to Rwanda. Uh, both of them, they're essential to our survival, um, those of us who work in the house and anyone who comes to the openings. Uh, but the coffee shops also have really grown and flourished, and in the case of Munir's Coffee Shop, we, which had started as sort of a very tiny five chairs, and was a bit of an illegal enterprise, and we properly built those space and so forth. Um, and that's for the car mechanics, which everyone always oh, notices. Okay, yeah, yeah. Our resident artists are often working with them um, for metal work and things like that. Um, there's a glass vendor on the little lane next to Rolaba who's constantly furnishing us with uh, different materials and products for exhibitions. There's the 
second painter and then like we work constantly with Colin as well. Um, so we very much need them. Well, they, you know, I don't know if they need us, but they definitely need us having us there as well. Um, and all of that is to say that Townhouse enters into the street where there is already a very strong Culture and politics between all of these different um, um, We had to negotiate our entry into the relationships and learn how to work with each other. Um, and Tanya would not be the institution. You know, if it just anywhere else, because of these very close relationships with all of these people who work there, um, having worked. So we'll just do these short uh, presentations, and if you have any questions, please write them down. Okay, so we'll have a little bit of a little bit Hi, um, my name is Karim Shafi and I'm the 
I'm going to present this Maria very briefly um, and, and uh, try and, and, and explain it from from uh, purely from a real estate point of view, but also what how we view art and what we do with uh, with art, even though the presentation is not really developed for that. Basically, our company well, it does it, uh, it buys the old buildings in downtown. And um, why did we choose downtown? Because we, we find that uh, the architectural heritage is very unique. Um, also, the urban heritage is very unique. It's actually downtown is the only place in Cairo town that has a function of sidewalk, for instance. Um, it's, it's also a place that has seen uh, many changes uh, over the past um, uh, uh, years since it started, uh, or 150 years, and uh, it offers a very wide range of uh, inhabitants uh, of, of, of visitors that come in. Um, we also uh, see that uh, downtown is central. It's actually um, all the vehicles going through it, so we think this makes a lot of sense that um, it, it should be a lot more uh, used than most it is used for today. Um, uh, statistics that might appear later in the presentation um, is that we have around 30% of all the, the units in downtown are closed. Less than 7% of the space in downtown is being occupied by tenants. The rest is being occupied by commercial activities. Houses, so downtown as a, as, as a central place that, uh, that has um, all the routes going through it, be it to the train station, bus stations, metro stations, uh, the main streets, that's totally not being uh, uh, utilized as a uh, city center, like we have seen everywhere else. When we came, when we started this project in 2008, we realized that uh, there were several um, Characteristics in downtown. First of all, the ownership of the buildings is very fragmented, so the owners have no interest in stating their buildings, in, in making investments in their buildings, and benefiting from them. Um, in, in some cases, we bought buildings from up to 110 owners, 110 people. It's impossible to lose. It's impossible for those people to come together and make something out of it. We also found that, that the tenants in the buildings also were fragmented in the sense that some of these were made, were, were signed back 60 years ago, 70 years ago, and the people who don't fight them to those rest on the days were 10, 15 heirs. And uh, by the end of the day, they cannot also take the benefits from a residential apartment, for instance. And the only way for them to uh, be able to benefit from the that uh, uh, apartment is through selling the without an owner who they can negotiate with uh, they have no means of monetizing uh, uh, We found that the buildings were part of the infrastructures were completely gone. Nobody is interested to maintain the building, being the tenants for the And while uh, sometimes they fix the, the, the key, the, the important things, Eventually, what happens is we lose yeah. all the architectural beauty that was in those um, buildings. And we found that there uh, were several dying industries within uh, within those uh, buildings. Um, uh, so this is that are uh, 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 just to cover their uh, needs. Uh, 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 they're not bringing home any uh, 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 Reinvent themselves I feel or reintroduce uh, what they're doing in a better context than what uh, was there. Uh, I feel um, like they're doing some of the work uh, 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 Our vision for downtown is uh, uh, more than uh, uh, is, is a place, is a meeting point for all different uh, segments of the society. We think that, uh, that, that all city centers around the world are a place uh, where uh, different uh, uh, socioeconomic segments of society can meet and can be shared. Downtown should not be an exclusive space uh, uh, for the uh, society and not for the market, uh, not for the, for the uh, best and lower economic markets. It should be a place where everybody can meet and interact. Uh, we think that, that uh, downtown is one of the few places that hold uh, a very um, uh, Egyptian identity. Up until uh, today, it is, uh, uh, it is capturing the Egyptian identity that has not been mutated in the past 
30, 40 years of identity crisis that Egypt uh, and Germany is on. Um, there should be a place where um, uh, business, uh, tourism, art, culture, politics, etc. meet uh, um, and intermingle. Um, and we think that uh, the building should be uh, furbished and adapted to the modern uses um, in, 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 today's, uh, in, in today's world. Um, for us, the stepping stones to get there are activities that are non-discriminatory, activities that can um, put together uh, people from the different walks of life. And for us, there are two key uh, activities that we think bring people together from, from different uh, segments of society. One is art and culture, and the second is politics. Um, art and culture bring people regardless of their backgrounds. Um, uh, and we have a lot of examples, such as uh, uh, Azhar, uh, Park in, in Masrah Kenina, we have uh, the townhouse, we have uh, Sa'id Tassawi, which bring people from the different walks of life. Um, and also, obviously, recently, uh, we've only had this for two years, which is politics. Um, that is very interesting for people from the different uh, uh, segments of the society. So, our focus in, 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 in how we would like to uh, revive downtown, our vision of it, is to focus on art and culture as well as politics to bring people in. And maybe one of the examples that, that puts everything together uh, is our recent contract with uh, the Basin Show. I don't know if you're familiar with the Basin, the Basin Show. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a talk show, um, a little bit like John Stewart of Egypt. And they've taken one of our uh, buildings, which is a theater in downtown. They've redone it so that they can um, uh, do a live, uh, they do a live show. And it's recorded. and. and and play two days later. Uh, for us, this is a, a way to re-adapt the, uh, the use of a theater, which is an industry that has died in, in Egypt in the past uh, 15, 20 years. Nobody actually goes to theater anymore. Um, so we're reusing that theater in a function that is very close to it. Uh, it's a political show, and it's, a, it's, it's an artistic show. And, and that just goes to say, this is a very, very good example of how we want to push forward uh, our vision of that. Um, we, yeah, I'll, I'll cut through this very quickly, but uh, whenever we're doing any planning in, in, for uh, our project, we, we, we use a certain methodology. Here we've worked with, uh, with um, Harvard School of Architecture and Urban Development to, to study uh, what are the urban changes that happened in downtown between 1935-1940 and that uh, period until today to see what uh, uh, changes happen to uh, the, the activities that are in downtown, residents of downtown, the, the planning of the streets in downtown, and so forth, and, um, and try and interpret those uh, changes in order for us to be able to start planning our own projects uh, to, to, uh, uh, to fit into what is uh, there in downtown today. We do not want to uh, approach this from a top-down approach. Uh, Ismail is not here to say, this is how things are going to be in downtown. We would like to work more with uh, civil society, with uh, with the uh, residents, with the visitors of downtown, and use a more organic approach. Uh, you will not go to sleep one day and come the next morning and find that, that, find that uh, uh, all 20 minutes of the time we will do it very slowly, one project at a time, see how it fits within um, everybody's aspirations, see the mistakes that we make, and take it from there. These are examples of some of the buildings that we own and uh, what they look like today and what they would look like in, uh, uh, once refurbished. Uh, hopefully you, you, you see that the picture on the right is the one of them. These are ideas of how to use the rooftops. And by the way, there's a big myth that all the rooftops in downtown are occupied with, uh, with tenants. This is not true. In, in all 20 buildings, we have about eight or nine residents on rooftops, and the basically in one building. And all other buildings that we bought, we never had a yeah. residence. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, another passage on how to use uh, the building. This is the building. This is the building. This is the building. This is the building. Um, what, what we've done over the past uh, three or four years is we've worked with a lot of art institutions and artists on providing some space, some financial support uh, for them to be able to hold their um, their exhibitions and their, um, uh, their, their 
البرايز كلها
and I think I have to uh, to present Cinematech very quickly because I don't want to waste your time and save this time for the discussion. Cinematech is uh, a space uh, uh, to support the, the alternative cinema expression in, uh, in Cairo. Uh, the idea is to have a hub for uh, independent filmmakers and for uh, cinefil to to uh, to see films and to to argue and to discuss uh, and to do workshops. It's a space equipped with uh, hopefully it will be uh, 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 a screening hall for 100 uh, people and uh, a library and media tech of films and books and a cafeteria and um, uh, a lab for analog films for 16 millimeter and 8 millimeters and um, a multi-purpose space for workshops and, and as uh, uh, a workspace for people who needs to to who need to have a, a place to work. Uh, I don't want to do this much, but I have a lot of uh, comments about uh, things that maybe we can talk about.
had other options, uh, but downtown was the, had the most natural appeal to us. Not only because of the architecture or the beauty of it or our appreciation of it from a cultural level, but also in terms of access and what it means to be in the center of the city. Uh, CIC, some of CIC activities, uh, one thing that comes to mind is a project that was done a few years ago, curated by uh, Edith Monar and uh, Maria Hamza, which was Tales on the Pavement, or Tales Around the Pavement, I can't remember exactly the title. But it was uh, essentially, I think, about 10 installations that were spread throughout the downtown area. Some of them could be seen more or less than others. And there are remnants of them still today. So I can still see them in different places. We had no uh, no permissions to do anything. It was just an intervention. And one of them that was really funny was uh, just a TV. Someone was mentioning that earlier. TV on the on the pavement, couches, chairs set up, and huge crowd. But there were other things also, more more things that engaged people in thinking. I think there was a, a, a dreaming box or something about uh, posting your dreams or your your uh, your wishes on this box, or this booth, in the Mar uh, Rion. Remnants of that are still there, and then there's other examples. Um, so that I think this is um, something that always engaged us: is how, even though it was important for us to have a space as uh, an artistic group that works with photographic image or image in a broader sense, a space was very important for <coughs> our identity as a, as a cultural entity. Stable, and even though that uh, you know we uh, our first space was in Munira, we had a private landlord, and then we moved to uh, a relationship with the Smileo company that's been very fruitful for us. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't. I think gentrification or this idea, this word. Uh, maybe a result of, but it was never really an impetus for us thinking in this way. Sure. <clears throat> I sort of feel like I'm in a Shakespearean drama. I can't see this side of the audience. <clears throat> and it's kind of like one of those things where you go off stage, you kill somebody, and then you come back on stage, <clears throat> which I've always appreciated about Shakespeare, actually. Um, So you watch out over there. Um, so AUC um, is a private university. It says probably most people in this room know it in some ways um, better than I do, it, and even more intimately if you were involved with it, particularly when it was uh, only downtown. It's now on two campuses, downtown and out in New Cairo. It's uh, an old university. It's uh, been around in Egypt for well over 90 years. We're moving towards our 100th anniversary. But it's a small university. It, uh, it only has about less than 6,000 students. And when you look at the institutions of higher learning in Egypt, like Cairo University and so on, where they have hundreds of thousands of students, you realize just how small it is. Uh, but of course, it occupies a disproportionate amount of land in downtown. Cairo uh, through its historical circumstances. A few years ago, the board's uh, attempt was to move all of the undergraduate activity out to New Cairo. And that happened and was successful and sort of in, uh, in advance of the revolution. And that's allowed us probably to continue to operate in a way that would have been much more difficult to operate if we had remained only downtown. What we've intended to do downtown is to operate graduate classes, um, the CASA, which is the Consortium of uh, Arabic Studies Abroad classes, the Management Center, which is open to, uh, to all kinds of citizens and all kinds of classes, Continue Education, which services between 50 and 60,000 uh, people a year. It is located not just downtown, but also in Heliopolis and also in Alexandria. 
Um, and our intention was to maintain a robust cultural uh, presence downtown, by which we mean theaters, galleries, uh, and spaces for intellectual activities. Obviously, the, during the last two years, because the campus has been both open and closed due to circumstances beyond its control, has had fences or, or walls built at either end of two of its main access streets, we've been able to sometimes accommodate uh, large audiences like for Noam Chomsky or Noam Chomsky or Judith Butler, for instance. Uh, but we've also been closed from time to time and canceled many uh, many public events which we would have preferred to have downtown. We have, through the good graces of the Ford Foundation, been able to um, increase the capacity and the technology in the Falaki Theater so that it will can be used in, uh, in various kinds of ways as we move forward that will make it even better technically. And we've moved into an agreement with Amanata to have his group use that theater about half of the year so that it can be used for other kinds of events than AUC events. We were uh, working with us on Abasita to design a foyer kind of gallery cafe entrance to the Falaki Theater so that it can be separated from the security of the um, of the Fallaki building itself, but as I say, there's a whole series of things that are um, out of our control. Um, yeah, obviously, if you look at the Lise building, you understand what the kind of fears that we have about, about the vulnerability of the of the, uh, the spaces downtown. With regard to the specifics of it, the Greek campus was originally thought to be um, saleable and for sale after we moved to the new campus but we've since decided that we'd like to keep it and we're looking for um, leasors, leases, to, um, to take it up, but leases who are, have the spirit of, uh, of education or, or pedagogy as well as entrepreneurship, so we're looking at doing that and we seem to have some things on the horizon there. Um, the Falaki building itself, which is used for continuing education, will continue to be used for that and the old campus will be continue to use for the kinds of uses I just described and hopefully will be more of a major player if, if whatever the term is, normalcy returns, something like that. Um, and probably the only part of our, our assets that might be sold would be the rare books and, and uh, the rare books library, which is a smaller building that we have downtown. Um, it's my belief, and I think other people's belief, and I've heard it from people in this panel and elsewhere, that in order for there to be a robust cultural activity and for us to be a partner in it, that there's a whole ecosystem that has to be developed, and that ecosystem involves the schools, it involves museums, galleries, film societies, the kind of thing that Tom is describing, <clears throat> collectors, you know, academics, critics, dancers, the whole works, and that at this point, obviously in a city of this size, that seems like a very constricted ecosystem, and one that has to be expanded and has to be much healthier than it is. Um, I think those are sort of the main points I'd like to, like to make reference to. Great. I think we should open up the discussion, but I'll start with a question, uh, something that Tamer said about the importance of an alternative art scene, and then sort of one of the themes that came up through the different uh, speakers is, is the importance of downtown for whatever they're interested in, whether it's developing property or developing a cultural uh, sort of center. Uh, so uh, Temer, if you could start off the conversation by letting us know alternative to what? Uh, I mean, where is the non-alternative, I mean, what is the normal sort of scene that downtown to present an alternative uh, cultural sphere uh, as opposed to whatever or something else? Uh, and, and what is, what do you see in relationship to uh, sort of the other perspective presented, so the, the, the space holders. Uh, as, as, a, as a producer of, of art. You mean by relationship to the space holders? Yeah. Uh, Within the framework of an alternative art scene. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm coming from, uh, I mean, my vision. Uh, which I think I share with many of my friends and many people I know, that downtown has to be a, a place for everyone. And it's a place um, 
that has to reflect the, the, the diversity of the society. So we cannot exclude any, uh, any class, any culture from downtown. Downtown has to be the, the place where we all meet. And I think what we lack today is a proposal that is taking into consideration the interest of all of us. Uh, starting from the street vendors uh, and uh, including the artists, the, the people who are living in downtown, the, the private sector, the banks, the, the state, and the uh, political scene, and the people who are doing graffiti, and everyone. And the discourse about this proposal is absent. Why it's absent? Because, because actually, uh, it's, um, there is a kind of uh, imagination or a, a vision that is, uh, I think, uh, many, not all, many sides of this uh, image think that they will uh, uh, rule downtown exclusively. And I think uh, excluding the others is not the right, uh, the right point to start. Uh, for me, I think we were uh, suffering for a long time, for a long decades, of what I used to call it uh, a monoculture, which is a culture that uh, doesn't accept any differences. And in a way, the importance of the alternative art scene, that A, it's, it's the, the, the counter front to this culture, and it skewed the diversity of the society. And actually, uh, again, I, I used to say this, uh, we have in, in Egypt um, uh, about one, 190,000 mosques and we have 230 streets. 190,000 mosques means uh, a mosque for every uh, for, uh, 400 people. We have a mosque for every 400. And we have a screen for every 400,000 people. So, I mean, I think that it's obvious. But also, and this is another issue, that this 230 something screen, like 225 of them are owned by two companies. And these two companies are in coalition. And they also produce films and distribute films. So it's a kind of a total monopoly. So for me, why they will, they will put my film in the cinema and share the revenues with me, while they simply, they already produce their, their very commercial mainstream, uh, not, not mainstream, it's, 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 it's not only commercial, it's just bad films. It's just, it's just a film of disrespect. I mean, in every big industry, there is good films and bad films, but we have, we invented a third time, which is a, a disrespect. It's a kind of disrespect to the people who are doing the films and the people who are watching films. So they, they only put this disrespect films, and they don't want to, to put uh, other films there. So back to your question. And I, um, I'm happy that it's the first time we all here to, to talk, and I hope, uh, and I want to link this to all the introduction that we got, and I hope that we'll, we will not create any hard feelings, especially to my dear friend Karim. Speaking of which, Karim, Karim and Bruce actually, it seems like yeah. this is... Uh, and Bruce, this is the first time we meet, and this is also very significant. I mean, I'm living in downtown, I'm working in downtown for more than 20 years, and this is the first time we meet. And it's uh, very significant. I think it says out. Anyway, so I mean, the thing is within the vision of. Uh, I mean, 
many of my friends who are here in this, uh, who are attending this panel, are uh, actually uh, killing themselves to try to find a space to, to present their art. And I know all of them, I know most of them, and most of them are actually do nothing but uh, uh, be uh, part in this daily question of how we find a space to present what we want to do, how we secure the money that we need to do to, uh, to, uh, that we need to produce our work, and how we distribute our work. On the other hand, I think there is a total absence from the state, and actually, let's face the, the reality. The state doesn't like art. The state hates art. It's very simple, it's obvious. They said it to us by all means, and we need to understand this. They don't like us, they, they don't like what we do, and it's better for them if we are not exist. Okay, so let's, let's forget about the, the, the state. And yeah, yeah because, because it's obvious. On the other hand, what I'm saying is, in this situation, we need to come up with a proposal. This proposal, I think it will come only from the civic sector. It will not come from the state. The state doesn't want anything to be changed. This proposal will come only from us. And the problem is we don't do the proposal. Why we don't do the proposal? Because we don't find a platform to meet and to talk and to discuss and to come up together with a proposal that is going to benefit all of us. And it will, it will simply be for the interest of all of us. I will just say to, to Karim, and Karim really is a dear friend. I will ask her. <laughs> I will ask some questions to Karim and Bruce, and, 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 and then we can take it from there. First of all, one of the proposals that I saw in the in the in the in the presentation, which I really like, some of them, is about. I mean, you need to know that we are neighbors. I mean, Karim is. Karim's office is, actually I see Karim's office from my balcony. So, we are, Cimatec is the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> the opposite side of, but for example, and, and we, we, uh, we, we are collaborating, I mean, both of us, we, uh, we, we, uh, we are members in uh, an initiative to restructure the Ministry of Interiors. So we are meeting a lot. To, uh, to restructure the Ministry of Interiors. But then, it's the first time I saw the alley that is facing my office, and that is facing Cimatec place. And I, I would really appreciate it if Karim uh, asked me to, 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 uh, to, to do a brainstorming session about what, what, we, what we think as an art institution Looking at this alley, uh, what kind of imagination we have for this place? And the second thing is about Basim Shu. Yeah. So I think I think the idea of I mean um, um, I do believe that uh, let's take I mean Smaria wants to to to. Uh, to, uh, to maintain the cultural heritage and the cultural role of downtown. And it's not only about the, arch the, the architecture style, it's also about the, the art and culture scene. But the question is, and correct me if I'm wrong, we, you, you, we didn't till now, since you started till now, did you do any kind of meetings with, the, with, this, with, this, with this culture scene, with this art scene? Did you ask, the, and, and it's the same question to Bruce, did you ask, did you ask the, the artists and the, 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 the art institutions and the cultural institutions in downtown, what do you think, you, 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 what, what kind of imagination you have for downtown? I would say we want also to ask the street vendors, but this starts by the artists. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I have a lot
about this idea of lack of imagination, which is coming from my uh, experience. Uh, to be able to imagine or to have a vision, you need to be able to have something, I guess, material also, in a sense. So when I saw the Muni Sushi, <laughs> that he's talking about, to me, that hit me very strongly because this is the former Kodak. Right? So can we do something on that line? Uh, if I make a parallel to the exhibition that I have up now in the Viennois, the idea was to rehabilitate the building, keeping its character. The technicians that I was working with were horrified that I, I didn't want to tear off the wallpaper or paint. So all I wanted to do was just clean it. You need it. Yeah. So there is a certain character and uh, relevance Hello. to these spaces that are really decayed. Yeah. Uh, and yes, to engage other thinkers in how we can approach this. There are greening space or uh, energy uh, energy uh, uh, greening space.
and their choices are to ask townhouse for a space, which they, you know, they have to do to go to CAC, which they sometimes do to go to Ismailia to ask if they can use the villas or something. And a lot of them are quite fed up with having to fit themselves into these systems or structures, and so they're starting apartment galleries in Garden City or in Monera, or they're doing a one night event in Dobi, or starting something in Dobi. I mean, they're really looking outside into other neighborhoods. And actually, I think it's very important that this whole community become decentralized. Um, uh, I had something else I wanted to say, but it escapes me. For, for four or five years ago, when we started giving out spaces to art uh, artists and art institutions, the word spread in, in, in that society really fast. And, and within maybe two or three months of having started that, we got over 80 different artists and institutions who came to us saying, you know, we want one apartment, 800 square meters, um, because we want 300 square meters for a rehearsal space, we wanted 250 square meters for performance space, we wanted 100 meters for an office. And, and you know, we can provide 80, 1,000 square meters apartments for everybody who comes in for many uh, considerations. But more importantly, as we found a lot of the artists asking for space, they said, you know, we want a, a rehearsal space that they would only use once a week. Uh, they want a performance space that they would be using once a month. Uh, they would they want an 800 square meters apartment of which they would only be using the 50 square meters of the office space on a daily basis. And at the time, we, we started asking artists, why don't you come together and uh, you know rent one space where you have a rehearsal space that is shared by three or four or five institutions rent, um, and, and has a performance space that can host 10, 15 institutions, and uh, you know each one of you can have a small office and, and something like that. Um, most people said, okay, there were a lot of people who said, you know, I'd never work with another artist. We would never, we can never collaborate, etc. But the majority of people said we would be willing to do that. Uh, the, the question was, how can we get to 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 to, to that level? To where can we find the space that can host 10 or 15? Um, institutions and artists with their own performance space, the uh, exhibition space, etc. And we talked a little bit with uh, Ford Foundation, we talked a little bit with other artists, and, and, and it, it is a problem with funding. It's, you need a lot of money to be able to um, uh, find a space that is five, six thousand square meters that can host 10 or 15 um, institutions. So what we do so far is we provide space for one exhibition, uh, um, you know, a few months for a resident project, etc. But we can no longer give extended, you know, five, ten year leases to exhibition to artists. And the second thing is, um, um, a lot of uh, a, a lot of people have very good ideas, but they have no sustainability uh, models. So they want to take the space, uh, and and we're very happy to support the the, the start of a project, but we uh, 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 we can't as a company, and I wouldn't make it as a, as, a, as a person, a commitment that we will support an institution for the coming 10 or 15 years. We can support the start of an institution, but they have to eventually be able to sustain themselves. A lot of the models that came, um, uh, or the proposals that came to us, did not have a sustainability component. So that's why we couldn't um, help them. But I think these are two key challenges in uh, being able to uh, work with the artists. And, and mind you, I said it between brackets, but I really mean it. Artists don't want to work together. You know, everybody thinks oh, this other guy, he really doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm not going to work with this uh, painter or that. Uh, right. yeah, just a quick response, sorry to know. Yeah, um, uh, very quick response. First of all, um, I believe that uh, culture and art has to be self sustained. Uh, uh, and I think we had this conversation many times, me and Karim, and he, he knows. Uh, that I think, I think culture and culture and art in Egypt has to be sustained from itself, not only because of the money, because also the money that is coming from the revenues is a kind of a protection, and we need to 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 to, to be based on this thing. I think what what we miss is to have a, a business study, a, a, a business plan for this thing. Uh, um, 
I do believe something very simple. I, I used to say this thing about things. I don't believe that in, in, in a popularity of 360 million Arab, there is any single thing that doesn't have 250,000 people to watch. Anything. We have three, uh, 360 million art. Any art has to be really making money. The problem is we need support to do a good business plan to do this thing. The problem is this role is, is the role of, of the private sector. We are not saying that we, 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 we cannot. I mean, everyone here is really overstretched. We, we do many things. We are committed to everything. We are uh, 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 traveling from Tahdeya to Tahrir to our project to, uh, to, to meetings, to do our things. And then the private sector and, 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 and a big institution like AUC has to invest, have to, have to invest to, 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 to do this business plan. This is it. Second, a call, uh, uh, what about Simulati? Why, when you have this choice of uh, 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 using Simulati, why you commit to passive show rather than Make it for as a, as a space shared by artists. It's, it's 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 exactly. I mean, what I'm saying is we need to have a clear vision from from Smare, from EUC, from all other uh, uh, institutions. And let's uh, we are not here to blame each other. Let's try now to build something. We we need to have a clear vision saying our vision in art is this and this and that. And then it's our responsibility to respond. And instead of saying artists artists are working together or not working together. Let's announce a vision that we are ready to give this in the coming five years because we believe this is, and, and actually Karim, the, the main thing is art and culture is your tool to, to make your business plan. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's obvious. You need us to be able to sell your buildings, really. We are, we are, we are the people who will make money for you. <laughs> Simple. And here are the buyers. So let's let's open it up. Uh, yeah, and the uh, 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 Hi, my name is Aisha Bibi. I'm the head of the Visual Culture Program at the American University. What we do, we make good art programs to teach young Egyptian artists to become good artists. So from now to invest in downtown, Bruce said we are 5,000 students, but we're still willing to be part of what's happening in downtown. I think what's missing here is somebody from the government to talk about their vision for downtown. It sounds very sad that the government is not involved in what's happening in Cairo. But there are models, successful models in other cities in the world that probably you should check and look at and see how those models can be customized to Cairo. And I want to talk about New York because I come from New York and it's a small organization in downtown called LMCC and they work with businesses to give spaces for artists for six months a year and another six months a year and another six months a year and they are not involved in making profit and they are not interested in any terms of commercial art. There are spaces for emerging artists who are trying to make it in New York. I think one of the major problems in Cairo, not only in downtown, there is no artist spaces for artists to work in. And this is something that needs to be dealt with. I don't think university can offer uh, studios for artists to work in. We offer studios for students to work in. And I want to say something to Tamir. I think, sorry, one second, I'll finish, OK? You talked about 360 million Arabs. That for every, you know, and you talk about math, that there's a huge market in the Arab world, and this has to be some economy. The visual art economy in the Middle East is 31 million dollars a year, the art market. It's one silk screen print of Andy Wall that is sold in Christie's. And if you want to look at the art market, you have to study it very well and see the potential. And in Egypt, 35,000 Egyptians, they have one ambulance. So there are, you know, 35,000 Egyptians, every 35,000, they have one ambulance. So there are major, major problems. And, you know, we are artists and we think we are the most important people and we want screens and 
the small mosques. You know, there are much bigger problems in Egypt, but I think maybe today you have to think how to start the Dartan Cultural Council and sit down and discuss those issues. Thank you. I'll start by saying that I love you all and we're amongst friends and family, so if I overstep um, my politeness, it's well meant. Um, well, and I will also give a gift. I'm available anytime, all the time, all year, at a space which has lots of space for anybody from the Smalaya to AUC to get in touch if they need to do anything. We, have three, we are three highly qualified curators who are extremely dedicated to working here. And we also have a very extensive network of people locally, regionally, and internationally who are more than willing to contribute to a set of ideas and also to help think alternatively of ways to raise funds um, to do projects. So with that said, I don't think the question is um, a lack of uh, local know-how or resources. Personally, I've also scouted 11 of the Ismaili premises um, in December 2009 with the possibility of finding a place. The problem then was that the spaces were only available um, on very short term. I've moved to the West Bank of the Nile because the rent is much cheaper um, than downtown, in fact. I have a house with a garden and two mango trees, and I still pay um, about maybe an eighth or maybe even less than what townhouse is paying this money for some of its premises. Um, I say that because I am both sort of troubled by the things that are not mentioned and between the lines of everything we're talking, we're having two parallel conversations. So on the one hand, we're speaking, I mean, I, I think this can be extremely productive because we are sitting together and we're trying to sort of outline what the problems are. The question, the problem is also not just that young artists are not finding spaces. We have space. Sometimes it's a question of what they're young. I mean, it's a question. It's maybe what I'm hoping for is like, I mean, if there are young artists in the room that do need space, if we're speaking about them and I'm centered, then they should say what they need because we're here. If there are people who feel they're paying too much rent, then they should say because then we can try and find ways to subsidize that. I mean, I feel like we should really put our problems on the table. And I do agree. I'm extremely troubled by the fact that walking downtown twice to find out that the cinema has been converted, that there's going to be a Besson Yusuf show, that we can't walk into the cinema to see what's happened, to be told that they've pulled out all the old chairs. All these things are really troubling. I mean, it's so deeply troubling that it, it's really hard to speak about these things like that. And I mean, with regards to AUC, it's the same. I mean, we're at, we are available. I mean, it, they, they, it, there should be more discussion amongst us. I mean, with, I mean, we work very closely with Townhouse, with CIMATEC, and with, C, with CIC. There's a reason, because we really want to work together. I think, and the conversation's open to everybody. And I'm more than happy to invite everybody over to continue that discussion several times in the next few weeks um, at our space. Great, thank you. Uh, Nabeel, you had a point, and then we have some responses. Okay, yeah. Um, my point is, uh, I was, in a way, uh, I was in a way actually uh, um, disturbed by the vision that Karim was uh, uh, presenting to us uh, in relation to the, the downtown or the city center vision. Actually, I, I think Mohammed Shahid presented to us uh, a vision for the uh, downtown Cairo that is well, a competition, international competition that won by uh, Acom, the uh, American uh, international firm, and the local uh, architect actually. And I wonder where, whether actually Karim's vision fit within this uh, scope. Actually, it's, uh, it's really disturbing for me that uh, uh, a developer uh, within the downtown uh, would actually give his vision in a way actually that will, uh, will keep the, the downtown for certain people actually. It would actually uh, deprive the downtown of the diversity that it has. So I think the, the, uh, the, develop, the, the company actually should develop a more uh, relevant vision for the, the needs of downtown. This is your responsibility that works within, I, I, I know there is a global or another state vision that is needed, of course, and I think this is really important. For example, it's. Uh, it's, it is, of course, disturbing to me, actually, that, to see Basim Yusuf uh, 
uh, whatever working with then these old theaters and I would imagine I know for example that there is a can, can you just tell us also why because I'm it might be helpful to understand why actually it is there. The downtown was actually this location where actually you go for a theaters, so for cinemas. And it put that, I know the, the, the economic vision uh, or the economic de drive, but I actually I wonder if the Ismailia could have actually allocated space for commercial, bus and show, and instead actually for some uh, local uh, downtown artists as well in the same place. It, it's actually, it's, it's part of what has to do with the global vision of the uh, Ismailia to diversify, to, to keep the diversity or not. And this actually has to go with the uh, American University as well. I, I was involved in a way with the development of the uh, science building in, at, at the Tahrir campus. Um, and actually, uh, we're, de we're developing sort of uh, different ideas how to deal with the uh, public space outside the university, how to get people involved, actually, and we, and we get the uh, Lisa Anderson involved. I, I think it was really great, but it's one step, but the university should actually develop a bigger vision, actually, to incorporate whatever things. Yes. Uh, okay. Can I kindly ask people to limit the question to short questions? I don't, to 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 I don't have a question, but uh, I'm getting uh, very heated from what I'm hearing uh, around me. Um, I don't usually uh, uh, do this, but today I will be the devil's advocate. So Karim, I'm with you today uh, on certain things, not on everything. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm okay. My name is Lara Baladi, and I've been working uh, as an artist in Cairo since uh, 20 years. Um, uh, I've been very involved in how actually the, the downtown uh, cultural involvement has started and all of this. In fact, I have sold Karim a building to me uh, So I know him very well on the business side, and he does uh, know me too on that side. But. I have to say that what I'm hearing today, and as an artist that's been independent since before the townhouse existed in Cairo, and therefore most of the places and spaces we're talking about today even began to happen, uh, we artists at the time were doing everything on our own. And I'm getting a little bit tired of hearing people saying we should, and you should, and everybody should, and everybody owes us I don't know what. You know, if I'm an artist, it's because I want to be an artist, and it's my problem, it's my responsibility. And if I'm being held by some kind of funding, or some kind of university, or some kind of whatever, then thank God, and uh, it's good for me, and whatever. But, and I'll be very grateful. But at the end of the day, nobody owes us anything, and Karim doesn't owe us anything, and in fact, you know, if he's not doing the perfect thing in the face of everybody, he may also be doing something that, in fact, nobody has done until he started it with Ismailia a few years ago. So, in fact, what Ismailia is doing may not be perfect today, but it's something that nobody in the sector that he's working in was ever doing before. So, I think, yes, today we need to have very different dialogue or to develop a dialogue, but we cannot keep expecting everybody else to do things for us. You know, I get very annoyed to hear this. So I would like to say thank you to Karim for all the things he's done with all the artists and for having continued, in fact, something that the townhouse started with the Viennois and with a lot of other spaces downtown. And that had been initiated just, you know, very spontaneously in the last 15 and 20 years. And which he's very willingly and very openly uh, accepted to take on and to and to develop. Thank you. Uh, very briefly, I'd just like to respond to uh, the general tone of the conversation, also something that Tamer said. Uh, Tamer, you're absolutely right. It's uh, the, the artist and the art scene and the art uh, culture and etc., which is part of the large drawing magnet for people to be interested in downtown and in Ismaili, etc. As somebody who's been involved with Ismaili, as a member of the board of Townhouse, I'm the chairman of the Townhouse board at the moment, I would just like to second what Lara is saying and express Townhouse's extreme deep gratitude to Ismailia for saving Townhouse. I don't think that very many people are aware because these normally aren't things that are discussed publicly, but since this has been brought to this public discussion in this way, 
um, town, the rent the townhouse is now owing to Ismailia is um, a fraction of what we would otherwise be paying the private fam two families who owned the townhouse space and that were really had townhouse by the neck and townhouse was at risk of really at risk of very strong risk of not being able to exist anymore. And Ismaili came in and saved the day because Ismaili saw that having an art space like that was very important to the fabric of downtown and to, to uh, Ismaili. And again, I'd like to thank Ismaili for having that vision and doing that. So, so there is an important question that's coming up that I think we should also think about is, yes, we may be lucky to have uh, one company with a particular vision, but there is no governing structure that would guarantee that somebody else can come and also try to compete, let's say, with this money, and then not do what, you know, there is no, not help artists in any way, or demand something totally different, or tear down the properties altogether. And in fact, this has been happening in neighborhoods surrounding downtown. Uh, I mean, part of my problem with the, with, I mean, downtown is very unique and special, I think, in one way, but also, focusing on it has removed all, on, all of the attention from the surrounding neighborhoods, the more middle class neighborhoods, uh, that developed uh, side by side, and buildings there have disappeared, have been dis extinct. I mean, the, 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 the 19th and early 20th century heritage of Abdeen, of, of uh, all the surrounding, of Boulet, of course, and all the surrounding neighborhood have completely disappeared because also private um, investors are growing there and buying properties, but tearing them down, seeing no interest or investment in that architectural heritage or the historical heritage that depends on it and building uh, you know, something else that makes a lot of money. Uh, so square footage is not universal. Some square footage has attached value, I think, um, which is where the architecture comes. Um, and in this sense, um, I think what I'm hearing is a question about how do we as a civil society with all these different stakeholders guarantee that, I mean, there are institutions uh, associated with the government that have tried to document downtown architecture but have completely failed to do anything about it. Uh, I really wish they had come, the, uh, and I have to name them because they have to be shamed, the uh, Urban Harmony people, whatever their full name of their institution is. These are people who are paid by the state, who are, um, uh, you know, they get paid, they have assignments, but they do terrible jobs, and in fact, there's no policy that has come out of it that guarantees that Kareem, Kemer, Bruce, and all of us as, as civil society members can sort of have that relationship. So, so let's shame people when they do have responsibility. But I want to have uh, another. Uh, do you want to bring some discussion back to the panelists before we take another round of discussion? Yes. Questions, so, because I think that's going to be our last round because we're running out of time. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Clara and, and, and Karima for uh, for for uh, being playing the devil's advocate this time. Um, I, I just wanted to answer a couple of uh, points that were brought in by by Demir and Sora and uh, and uh, Nabil. Um, First of all, there I think uh, I think we do have Maria has an has an interest uh, obviously to 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 support art and to work with artists and and, and that's part of our vision and and, um, uh, and personally I'm very happy that this is how we chose our vision to be because other companies might have a vision of of, of redoing downtown as a as Disneyland or as a part uh, a place for McDonald's and so forth but we are not uh, yeah, we should not know. Uh, or understand how the art uh, world operates. It, it should be more of an initiative from the art world coming to us saying, you know, we have a vision and we would like Ismailia to work with us. Uh, we cannot run after the artists, one after the other, saying, you know, please come and please give us your thoughts and we will put the vision together for you and we will then fund that vision and we will make a business plan for it. If, if the artists can come together and come up with with a sustainability model, then what we can do is continue to do what we're doing. Give away space to people we think are good people who have something to say. Now going back um, on, on, on the point of the lesson show, um, if, if it were up to the art community, we'd give away all 600 apartments and, and, and shops and, and roof, uh, rooms and basements that we have uh, for free to artists for the coming 5,000 years. Uh, if it were up to uh, you know businessmen, I'm not saying it's Maria specifically, they would uh, build Disneyland if it brought them extra five dollars. Somewhere between those two extremes is where we need to cooperate. Now, a place like uh, Cinema Radio is a place that that has been puzzling us for a very long time. Theater is no longer in uh, in, in, in demand, economically speaking. Uh, a, a movie theater with 950 seats is not economic anymore. It's 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 over. We've done the math left and right, up and down. 
finding something like best and show whereby we have preserved the architecture and the, and the infrastructure of the theater. It has changed uh, in, in, in a very uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a way that is not permanent. We still have everything inside the original walls, the original uh, decorations that were made. The, we have not changed the structure of the cinema, which is what was built um, after Radio uh, uh, City in, in, in New York. Um, so for us, finding um, something that is both entertainment, political, uh, that attracts people from all walks of life, and we're not talking about uh, you know an affluent society exclusively, it covers quite a, you know, everybody watches Best of Show. Anybody can get an invitation into Best of Show, regardless of where they live or how much money they have. It's not paid. And it's, an, it's a company that can pay us a, a, a rent enough to continue to be able to support other artists who do not, who cannot uh, uh, today bring that sort of money. We have to make a balance between activities that bring cash for the company and activities that, uh, uh, that we can subsidize. Now, the other alternative other than the Besson Show that would pay such rent today would have probably been some sort of uh, cabaret or a restaurant uh, that serves 550 pound steaks. So that's a compromise that we think is, uh, is, is, is as close as we can get. Uh, whether you, you ask the question again about whether uh, we have talked to people from civil society, we've done a presentation to so many different civil society um, uh, organizations. The latest was a month and a half with the EIPR, the, 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 the right. We, we take notes. We've asked, and, and so many of those maybe attended a few of them, that civil society needs to work with us. Again, it's the same problem with the artists. We cannot run after people and say, you know, you need to come and sit with us and tell us exactly what you want. Uh, we, we offer, we open the doors. Uh, sometimes people are interested, they come and talk to us, and then they disappear, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, the last thing I would like to answer to Nabil when you're talking about our vision. Uh, our vision, the, the vision that we have is not final, and we continue to fine tune it as we go. Um, you, you talked about the loss of identity in downtown. I tell you that, and we, we have the statistics, we've done the research for it. In the past 50 years, people have, been, have moved completely out of downtown. Today, what we are trying to do is not to mobilize people out of downtown. We're trying to add more options in downtown. What you have today is that 30 to 40 percent of the units in downtown are not used. They're either locked, uh, people are not living them, uh, living in them, they're locked, or they're being used as warehouses for, uh, and, and storage rooms for offices that uh, you know two, two individuals are working in a 500 square meter office. Um, and, and the fact is, there are a lot of segments that have escaped downtown. Uh, what we are trying to do is to create space for the middle and top market, which have left downtown. Some people who are now you know, born in, 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 uh, um, in, in the fifth settlement in New Cairo, they go to school in New Cairo, go to university in New Cairo, uh, they have no idea what downtown is like. There is no space for them. They, are, they have no interest to come into downtown. Same thing with the middle market. They're, they're, they're locked in Nasr City, they're locked in, in Mohadisi, they have no idea what downtown looks like. So what we're talking about is bringing more people, we're bringing more segments in. That doesn't mean that we're mobilizing people out because there's so much unused space in downtown today. There's a lot to be said, and I think I just want to give the opportunity to yes. There's a gentleman there, and I, and I think Okay, very quickly, can, can you try to be as compact as possible? May, uh, <laughs> Gina, and then... Okay, okay. As quick as possible, because I want to give everybody on the panel an opportunity to, to make a final statement. Um, I'm not an artist, and I am very limited in contact with the art world, but uh, everyone is telling me there's no space to show their art. And I've, the idea I'm about to bring up with you, I mentioned to other my artist friends, and they all tell me it's a bad idea, it'll never work, but I want to bring it up again. I think, why doesn't art move on to the internet? It is relatively cheap, like, you, art can be seen there, and it provides a way to make money through selling art online. I, I see it as, a, as an option, as I can see, everyone's laughing at me, but no, that, that's okay. But that's okay. But there you go, that's my idea, and I'm done. Uh, I just feel we keep on going around in circles. We keep on saying the same things because we are not 
making the effort to involve the government. And I'm sorry if the urban army doesn't want to come, we ask the governor. If it doesn't want to come, we ask the high until somebody bloody well comes here. If they don't come, we go to them. And we have this conversation in a way that does not exclude them. The same goes for the rest of the residents and the merchants and the, the, the flat owners, etc., etc., who are always excluded from these conversations, and it's getting extremely annoying. That's one. Two, we need to be more creative about the kind of support we give each other. Karim, the kind of support I would want from you, and I, I have space in Heliopolis, is not a space. It is how you manage to buy those 20 buildings legally. <laughs> not, with, not about money, it's about legality. It's about capacity building. We all have problems dealing with the government or dealing with tenants or dealing with whatever. We are never able to manage. We go from one lawyer to the other. We go from one government, uh, one governmental office to the other. If somebody knows how to deal with this and is able to do it, I need to know how it's done. That's one. And the second thing is, instead of giving people the spaces, as Temer said, please help people with their business plans, with sustainability. This is the kind of help that is needed from the business community, even more than money. And having said that, then go back to people who work in the creative end of the thing, and go beyond the people that you know, because you might find some very interesting ideas. Okay, uh, can we have Paul and then Lina, and then we'll have final words. Yes, yes. I have a quick question. Yeah. Now we're talking and complaining about this malaria, not doing or not doing. Uh, I think Hispania has been very helpful, but that has been said already by Laya and uh, Kariba. But the question is, that is the case or the scenario now that a lot of the buildings have not been uh, renovated and the areas have not been gentrified. Uh, where is the space of art and or, and or art spaces in your general scheme once gentrification has happened? Thank you. Lina in the front and then closing comments. Thank you. So my question is, or my comment is to Bruce and AMC as a change from uh, addressing everyone, uh, all comments to Kay. Um, and it's a question related to process and the question of exclusion and inclusion. And it's you know it's out of the belief that an urban space is primarily or the, the marker of an urban space is the, spo the social space or how it has been occupied socially. And I'm very bitter, as um, many of us uh, who, you know belong to AMC at some point as alumni as a community uh, about the process of uh, the move to the new campus. Um, for so many reasons, including the very emotional, um, you know, attachment we had to the old campus, and how the old campus for us uh, meant obviously more than a building. Uh, it also meant our connection to downtown and the outside world by and large. So um, my first, uh, my first I, memory of AUC basically was when we actually broke the doors of AUC uh, uh, back in 2003 in. Uh, the the, 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 the anti-war protests uh, back in 2003. So in terms of reoccupying these campuses and reutilizing them and opening them up um, for arts and culture initiatives, I think it's, it's, it's indispensable to uh, engage in some sort of a reconciliation process and a conversation with all those people who have been extremely bitter about the movie experience, who didn't have enough explanation about why this happened beyond the usual, the campus was growing too small, uh, the, the new campus is a bigger investment, is a better space and all that, when the real issues of our connection to downtown were not uh, addressed. So I feel that before engaging in using the space randomly or curating it for any uses, we need to address those very uh, essential issues uh, before, before just, you know, reopening the space randomly. Thank you. So Bruce, do you want to uh, begin our sort of closing comments and respond to you as well? So three things I'll answer yours. Can you hear me? Okay. Three things I'll answer yours last. Um, the first thing is like giving half of the space, half of Falcon Theater to Alma at Tar was based on looking at what that group has done and how they've done rehearsals for people from everything from plays to film scripts to 
radio plays and so on, and how, how we could use them and they could use us as a partner. So we're very committed to that idea and committed to the, the uses of those spaces as public spaces. We use the space of the Falcon Theater to train invigilators for the for the uh, elections and so on and so forth. So I think, but you know, but part of it is out of, out of our control in the sense that we don't close it randomly. We close it because we're forced to close it for security reasons. To go to Tomer's uh, question, I think that you raised something interesting. When I look at uh, Ms. Malaya's business plans, I think what I'm going to do is go to the business school and talk to them about students who do business plans because they do it in classes and everything all the time and they could actually be fully engaged in, in working with the downtown community and, and because they need projects, as it were, and, and that sort of thing. The third part about being bitter about AUC, I don't know that I can address fully, but it's, it's never been closed. I mean, it's only been closed because of uh, external circumstances, not internal ones. It's, been, it's the intention of the campuses. One is being used for certain kinds of activities, the other one's for undergraduates out on the, on the new campus. There's never been any intention to close it, never any intention to not allow people on the, onto the campus. The science building was planned to be torn down. There was a brilliant new building that had been designed that would have been relatively transparent so that people could move into Tarir Square and from Tarir Square onto the campus. It was mostly glass. It would now have to be built out of bulletproof glass, I suppose. But, you know, I mean, so the, the plans are there. You know, it's just been very difficult for us to do. Plus, we lost an enormous amount of money through the last two years. So, you know, we lost about $9 million in one year by virtue of the circumstances that we're external to. So, it's not out of a lack of desire or anything like that. But out, out of you know external circumstances. So, but as to being bitter, I know I have faculty members that don't want to move out to New Cairo. So I don't. You know, I know that there are people that are nostalgic for the old way of life, and you know we'll never make that adjustment. So. I, I think just to build on something you said, I think AUC has a brilliant opportunity to use its academic programs to really respond to some of these you know, essential issues that we're dealing with today. I mean, we, we talked about issues of policy and I think students can work maybe on real life experiences and on the ground um, fact, I mean, factual situations and actually apply some of their lessons to actually form some of these policy issues, business plans, but even the architecture school has an immense opportunity to really implement ideas of adaptive reuse. I don't think we quite have, I know Nabil in Cairo University works with this issue, but the idea of how to use an old building with new functions is completely foreign to the majority of architecture schooling uh, in, in Egypt. So all of these are issues that would have to be responded yeah, I mean, to. I mean, I mean, for instance, in terms of environmental concerns, at the new campus, we figured out a way to save a million dollars last year by turning off the air conditioning at night, for instance, with really brilliant ideas like that. <laughs> and, and, you know, some of that was going to be applied to the old campus as well if we can be, get back in there. So closing words from, from the rest of the panels. I'm really sorry we didn't have more time to discuss and hopefully we can carry on this conversation and maybe uh, start with what she said. Well, for me, I think the continuation of this is really, again, uh, looking back at our relationship to place, uh, the fabric of downtown, uh, the intimacy of the spaces and how they function even if they're decaying. And again, this comes back to building experience and, and understanding our relationship to to the materiality of the space. I just want to say a little anecdote. Um, over the years, every time I look at Ismailia spaces that are empty, that are possible to use, I always find a photograph, a portrait of someone who has been left behind. The place is empty, but there's always a portrait. Why, I don't know, but it's special. It's very special. So engaging, you know, uh, the private sector with the, the residents of the area, the cultural activities, and the street vendors, and, but uh, this materiality, somehow, I'm not being, I'm not able to express it fully, but be re-engaging with the urban, the urbanness of the space, uh, valuing what we love about it, uh, and then thinking creatively, imaginatively about reuse. Thanks. Sorry, uh, sorry, Lara, if I annoyed you. Uh, 
but uh, actually maybe it's because of my bad English. Uh, I, I wasn't talking about any favors. Yeah. I wasn't talking about any papers and sure nobody owes anybody anything. I was talking about mutual interest. I was talking about the possibility of because I know that we are we, we, we are heading we, we, we it's it's it seems like we have a similar vision and uh, Karim I don't owe Karim and Karim doesn't owe me anything. But we have a mutual interest, and we need to, to find a platform to, 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 to get this mutual interest. Uh, 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 Karim is, uh, I'm so grateful to Karim for everything he did for Townhouse and for everyone. But this is another thing. What I'm, I'm saying here is about, is about the mutual interest that we, we like. We, in, in this country, usually, we, we have a problem. We are building now a way of working together. And we need to, 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 to take it from there. And we, we all need to keep this conversation. Uh, um, I want to talk about practical things very quickly. First, I think it's not only about money, and I hate to make this thing about money. I think one of the ideas, for example, since you have all these rooftops, so why you don't do art issues on the, on the rooftops? And this will not cost you anything. Uh, this will not cost uh, Ismaili anything. The other thing which uh, I think is very important is uh, I need mean, all the institution, and I think this includes us also as artists. We need to to to, to come up with a vision and with with uh, with a proposal. We want to know uh, we want to know what AUC is ready to offer, what Ismaili is ready to offer for the mutual interest, not as favor to anyone. And this has to be clear, and then. I'm also lobbying for a kind of mutual opportunities for everyone. So it has to be very transparent and and it, 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 in the end of the day they, they, they have to look after their interests and nobody is blaming them for that. But let's see if there is a possibility of having a mutual interest. The last thing which I'm offering here because I don't want to make this conversation and also and the, the, I think we are here to tackle the, uh, to address the problems, not to talk about how that we 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 have people we have next 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 that are sharing some uh, visions yeah. with us. This is very uh, very clear to me. Uh, just to be very practical, I'm, I'm 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 suggesting that now and today we 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 decide a date to. To, to start this conversation, to start this platform, and to start uh, 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 um, doing the process of the dialogue about how we we, 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 we do downtown. And I'm offering to, to host this thing at Cinematech if you want. But but this has to include all the key players, not only the artists. And and I think we, 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 it's our role today, it's our it, it has we, we, we have to come up with a date and with, with a kind of a proposal of how we carry on with this thing. In the end of the day, the, the, our, um, and the other side, who, uh, we are really working together against us. If we, if we will not save our necks collectively, our existence here will be very difficult. <laughs> anyway. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, I have two points uh, which are sort of piggyback on what Tamara was saying. Uh, the first one is is this issue of uh, you know mutual benefits or mutual support, and this also is related to something Aisa said that we have to pay attention to other models around the world. And I think what we're talking about here is these kind of cool cities initiatives. Uh, such as the one as well as the Richard Florida and that Flight of the Creative Class book, um, whereby there's some kind of a model in a city. Um, I mean, he was positing that if we look at a neighborhood where there's so-called cool industries, such as art making or you know, design studios or what have you, some kind of intellectual labor, um, just the very presence of having that kind of labor in that neighborhood is going to somehow enhance the value of those 
those properties because people feel that it has this kind of that little cool factor and then they want to go there. And then if people are going there, you can have a restaurant and you can have a cinema and then you can rent the flats for more expensive and then you can get other businesses to come there. So a lot of cities have tried to implement that model um, from this kind of top-down approach, usually through public-private partnerships of having arts districts or mixed-use arts districts. Um, with the purpose of that turning into economic revitalization for the city. And that has just failed and failed and failed and failed. It failed, you know, so many cities in Europe tried to do it. The Liverpool, it failed, it failed in Detroit, it failed in Chicago, it failed in Beijing, I'm sure it will fail in Bilbao. And I think that a big fear on the part of arts practitioners here is we're feeling that we're being instrumentalized, you know, by real estate companies to give value to these buildings and then eventually, you know, who knows what that is all about. Um, so I just wanted to mention that just to bring that broader context into the conversation. And then the second point that I wanted to make was the, the question of sustainability. And for me, beyond the broader question of what are we doing with downtown, I think like people who are running or trying to operate spaces have to have a discussion together. Also, more specifically, about how are we going to continue or find some other form of support for these spaces. Um, because, unlike in other cities around the world, the forms of support that are available here are incredibly restricted. There's no municipal support, there's no real private support, there's no there's either foundations or there's foundations to work with the private sector. And it's not sustainable. Townhouses, for example, is an incredibly precarious. Situation. You mentioned rooftops. We have the rooftop studios in Manila, uh, which provides uh, 10 different artist studios working space uh, for about 100 or 200 pounds a month. It's incredibly cheap. And the rent is absolutely exorbitant. And we've relied on foundation support to fund that, and we're running out. Um, so, so we're in a constant state of precarity, and because art spaces have tended here to run themselves as charities, we've sort of put ourselves in that place of precarity. And we, we need to find solutions that don't mean asking the private sector or asking. There has to be, that has to be a, a conversation also. Uh, uh, supposing, I, mean, I, I, I agree with uh, what Tam is saying, uh, the dialogue needs to start uh, on and, and, and that have already started uh, uh, a form, uh, uh, a platform where uh, the different players can meet. Uh, I, I just want to remind you that, that the players in downtown are more than just the real estate investors and the artists. Uh, um, and, and each one wants, wants to pull downtown in a completely different direction. So street vendors, one, if, if, if it were up to them, they'd block the, the, the streets entirely. If it were up to the merchants who have stores, they would kill the street vendors. If, it's, if it were up to the artists, they'd take over all the buildings and, and, and not uh, allow anyone to pay a single penny. And if it were up to the, the real estate investors, they tear everything down and build same stars. So it's it's a, and so everyone has a, a different direction. What downtown looks like today is the result of negotiations between the different players. Uh, today the, the street vendor knows that he can only take a meter seventy five from the street. More than that, he would start losing customers, he would start uh, 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 making the merchant angry enough to start attacking there's a negotiation that happens between the different players. Uh, we need to do that negotiation between the different players. Uh, uh, and we need to do that in a smart way so it doesn't end up being a top-down approach again. Between you know, academics, artists, real estate investors, while the actual people who are going to be using the spaces and, and benefiting from the public space are excluded from the, the discussion. So, we don't have the power of uh, making anything uh, executed. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you an example of this. We're, we're working with Omar now on two, uh, two fronts. One front is the pedestrian passages and how they can be brought uh, uh, they can be brought back 
of the, 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 the same functions that have uh, starting with taking them up, like the cafes and the, the stores, etc., keeping them there, while creating more space for the pedestrians. It's a, it's a, it's a project where the, we're documenting all the passages, what sort of negotiation happens between the different players, and how we can enhance that. To put the final project for the government to implement later on, because as far as the government is concerned, what they would like to do is to either clear them up completely, or the pedestrianize the rest of downtown, which means you block out Harbour Street or Adli and, and make that into pedestrian. To look a lot like Shawarbi and you know, it's, it, it's a really difficult process to manage with the sort of government we have today. But we're trying. We're, absolutely, absolutely. No, that it's a, it's a it's a it's a process, Yanni. It doesn't. We don't start the project now and finish it now. Uh, the other thing, Omar was also working on something that has to do with uh, uh, finding a solution for street vendors on the spot, yeah, in their locations. Uh, everybody was thinking, move those people outside of downtown. We think that they should not move, that it should be done in a way where they can still remain there, but it's not as uh, uh, territorial and as messy as it is today. That we're, we are trying to support different issues. Just like I said, we work with artists, we work with urban managers, we work with, with refurbishment uh, people. We need everybody to come together. The actions that is happening today, uh, uh, Omar and Beth are, are leading an effort. We're, we, want to, we are very happy to be involved in that effort. Today is one of the activities uh, in that effort. And I think we, we should continue to support what they are doing. We should continue to support what they are doing. Thank you. Just a two second thing. <coughs> of all the many smart persuasive things that Tower said today. The main one I think he said that for me that resonates is the one where he said power doesn't like you. And I think you should kind of keep it in mind that power wants to own symbolic capital as well as real capital at all times. And that's a really important point to say. And it's actually our power. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think there's no way to move it. So I personally think uh, allow Cairo to have its own experience because the conditions are very different from Beirut, from Balbao, from New York, uh, whether it's for both ends, the analytical or the developmental, we're out of time. But please join us uh, for a quick uh, reception afterwards to yeah, continue the conversation. Just to continue the conversation, people are welcome to stay. We'll have food and drinks. So. Thank, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> سلام بقى انا هطلع بقى شكرا على لا لا هاخد معايا خديها معاك خلاص بقى